another Tuesday on your view. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Nima Akasha Ziberi, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Uh, I'm grateful to Yemi Legend. Yes. I got this platter of food and we could not cook yesterday <laughs> because we could not finish it in one minute. Oh. Everybody in the house sat with it and we were still dead uh, late in the night and my sister came. Thank you, sir. Every year you do this. God bless you. Business very, very thoughtful of him. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you. Well. I got mine too. And you know, I was wondering why I wasn't feeling hungry. And I realized that, oh, yeah, you ate small chops. I dropped yours in your house. Yeah, I didn't eat. I don't eat. I've started, I'm gradually stopping myself from eating these kinds of food. Oh, okay. so I just handed it over to the kids. Oh, <laughs> and, but I'm happy that I got, at least I got mine. <laughs> so, but um, I'm, I'm very happy and grateful to God. Um, August has been wonderful. Thankful for open doors. I'll just give it at that. See the news on my social media. <laughs> How are you doing, Mariam? I love your fine. top. Oh, thank Beautiful, you. Very mm, colorful. And... <laughs> thank you. For me, it's um, an appeal to the people of Plateau State. Mm. I mean, it's really a sad situation going on there. The, my heart first goes out to the families of those who were caught up in that, um, with the murder and injury of those people in the bus, and also to the families of those in Basa com um, local government, the Uruguay community. For exactly. the, you know, continuous ravaging of their villages, you know, destruction of their farms, killing of their people. But I'm just appealing to the people of Plateau States. Let's just, you know, um, work together and embrace peace mm -hmm. and let the government work towards um, giving people justice. Because sometimes when you delay justice, people think that they can just take the laws into their hands and do, you know, cause mayhem across the board. So... The people were asking that you put your hands together and pursue peace, and the government do your part in making sure that criminals are brought to book. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my heart just goes out to people in Plateau say, let's maintain peace. Yeah. You know, it's a state of peace and tourism. Mm -hmm. If we maintain the peace, then we can enjoy the benefits of tourism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coming from somebody from that state, yeah. That, yeah. That, that's quite heavy and thoughtful of you. Um, mm -hmm. You I know doing? you'd have loved to be on the show yesterday mm -hmm. when we talked about it, but I'm happy you weren't because you've already been very <laughs> emotional. Yes. But yeah, it's a very painful situation. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, i just like to use my, this opportunity to remind Nigerians they've brought the vaccines. Please get vaccinated. Get your shots. Um, the government has, I think it was yesterday they rolled out. So please get your vaccines. It's important because the only way we can reduce the impact of this, um, of, 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 of this virus is that everybody gets vaccinated. So that's my banter this morning, get vaccinated. Yeah. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us, we'll move. Starting with the nation. Bits open for Lagos, Kano, Abuja Airport, um, Port Harcourt Airport actually. COVID-19 vaccination resumes with Moderna. Five killed in Taliban shutdown of Kabul airport. Oscom, Pandev, INC, PD, PDP, protest, IP, PM, PIB Act. 2022 budget to be funded with 4.9 trillion Naira loan. His minister. NCDC, cholera killed 1,174 in seven days. Lagos begins recruitment into health sector. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, yes, the major headline, there's been plans to concession of the airports, the Lagos, Kano, Abuja, Port Harcourt. I remember I told the story about two weeks ago when it was re-emphasized that they are not selling, but the government cannot afford to maintain this airport. So the um, concession bid that is now opened, the aviation workers feel it's not realistic, but the um, contract is supposed to protect the workers, so the, work that the workers don't have any reason to worry about loss of jobs. The concession will be affecting major in all the international, um, um, all the international terminals. There will be a public-private partnership arrangement, and we're hoping to see how profitable that will be for Nigeria in the long run. Yes, I have NCDC is reporting again on the cholera epidemic. So it says between August 2nd and 8th, we have lost 1,174 persons across the 23 states and the federal capital territory. Um, sadly, about 26 um, of the suspected cases are children between 5 to 14 years. 
Uh, 51 of them are um, males, 49 are females. This is a serious case. I mean, as I keep saying, 2021, there's just some of these things you feel that we should have handled, we should be able yeah. to um, do away with. So we're appealing to Nigerians, please make sure that you're keeping, you know, you're, you're hygienic, you're keeping your um, area clean, you're washing your hands yeah. and things like that, eating properly cooked foods. And all these things help to... For such a preventable um, disease. Yeah, help... So I wanted to, yeah. So I wanted to take the picture story. Um, the city of Kabul, many of us woke up to this story yesterday, mm. was all over the media. What happened in Afghanistan, where the Taliban took over uh, at the city and the president fled and five people have been reported to die while we were trying to board the evacuation um, um, airline, was evacuating uh, workers on the US embassy and other and, uh, and other uh, US citizens. And we're trying to get on board <coughs> that flight. Five were killed. I'm not sure exactly how it happened, but many Nigerians are trying to deduce lessons from that experience, saying exactly. that we must ensure that we sustain our democracy and don't get and don't let it not deteriorate to this point where mm -hmm. we're having to flee in different ways. That this is something we need to learn from and uh, make sure that mm -hmm. we keep it's, the peace, as you had said earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not our hot topic, but you know, it was very um, eye-opening to hear the president of the United States saying that you know we came here to do our job, we've done it. And the Afghans have not done their part, and that is yeah. why they are in this position. So, so you don't wait on anyone to come and um, to yes, help okay. you. You mm -hmm. are your own saviors, and mm -hmm. that's what we keep telling Nigerians. See, this is our country. No one else is going to come here and save us. We need yeah. to make sure we put our hands together I, I, I think it, and maintain peace. I think peace. it's even deserving of a hot topic. We can actually have a conversation mm -hmm. about it, because mm -hmm. Nigerians should... It's good for us to build on this experience and mm -hmm. see how we can learn from it. Um, let's move on now to daily trust. NNPC, PEF, PPRA to go, uh, to go as Buhari signs PIB into law. COVID-19, AIDS workers at risk as Buhari flouts isolation guidelines. We won't allow play to return to days of religious crises la long. High taxes pushing SMEs, mortality rates, says Oshimbajo. How bandits abduct 15 students, five staff from Zamfara College. Encomiums as IBB clocks 80 today. Why, uh, why third force would be difficult in 2023, says Naaba. Right, which stories? I have the COVID explosion story. Uh, critics have come for the president saying he's flouted the same guidelines that he claimed yesterday, or his spokesman, Gabashio, claimed that he was adhering to. Because immediately the president arrived, with, in less than an amount of days, he seemed to have signed the PIB into law. He's also seen to, you know, to be mixing with his close staff who had to take pictures and promote some of his activities. And they believe that he exposed those people because he was exposed to a confirmed COVID case, the Nigerian mission in, in, uh, okay. mission in the UK. And that person, because of that, the commission had to be shut down for 10 days in the UK. He's expected to have, you know, be more uh, responsible in his activities and strictly isolate after coming back to the country even though he might not have a case. Well, a lot of people have taken the vaccine. I like to believe that people in that kind of level would have probably taken the vaccine. So, maybe they thought it doesn't mean they can't get it, but, they can, but it still protects yeah, us. The commission was yeah. shut down, down for, for yeah. you know, COVID in the UK for 10 days, and you were at that commission. The least you can do. Yes. Sort of agree with them. Mm. So, I have another heartbreaking story. I think we, we already know this story. The College of... Yes. Mm. The College of Edu um, Agriculture and Animal Sciences in Zamfara. Mm -hmm. uh, the bandits came in, abducted 15 students and five staff members. They stormed the school around 11 p.m. And um, there were policemen actually stationed in the school. They got into a gun battle with them. Mm -hmm. Even um, vigilante groups from neighboring co um, communities came to join the police. But these bandits outnumbered them and overpowered them. They went straight to the hostels, started uh, breaking down the doors. And they said sometimes they'll just point guns at the students in the hostel and tell them to open the door. And so they took away... Uh, 15 students and five staff members. And this is five weeks after they had kidnapped the mm. provost of that school and who was released after a ransom has been paid. Police, of course, have said they've um, uh, set up a search and rescue team to make sure they find these people and hopefully catch these bandits and prosecute them. Okay. So, major headline. After 13 years back and forth, the president has sent to sign the PIB. Um, the actual ceremony will take place on Wednesday because he's supposed to still be isolating, but he, was, he signed it still within isolation. The previous 
petroleum um, bill that we have had been on since the Petroleum Act of 1969, which was very obsolete. Many people had complained that this had cost us millions and billions of Naira because some investors would not come in because we didn't have a proper framework. In this framework, of course, there will be a um, rejigging of how NNPC, um, P, um, PPRA, and mm. all these other agencies would work. It also might involve the fact that there will be removal of subsidy, which some have already complained. Um, one name, I'm trying to get the name of the who uh, is designation. He said that one like he said this might be tough. The removal of subsidy might be tough on Nigerians, but in the short and medium term frame, it will be a necessary hardship for Nigerians to go through. Mm -hmm. I don't think we want to hear that part of the bill, but I think it's something that we need to just be prepare ourselves to face mm -hmm. and then effectively rebuild this entire petroleum industry. But I would like you to uh, notice well, where our, most of our funds come from. Because now the DPR becomes obsolete and mm -hmm. the, the Department of um, Petroleum Resources' duties DPR. become divided between two new agencies. What is going to happen to the staff? They don't clarify it now. We will not have issues of a, another labor issue in future, and you don't want no, to... I think that they will just, re, they will just reassign all and the staff should, because... I'm hoping that some hear. departments fall where they are yes. uh, supposed yeah. to go. I'm just hoping, but you know... We, need we to just hope that them. they are making those arrangements, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Nobody mm. wants Pepe Gassin to join in yeah. strike. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, I was going to take the fact that um, our vice president will be represented um, at an event for, I think it was LCCI, no, ACCI, actually, uh, he was saying that um, high taxes is causing SMEs mortality rates. So many companies are dying because they are paying high taxes. And according to him, about 41 million um, participating enterprises, of which makes 76% of that is the nation's labor force. And they're saying that they have to propose to the legislator to harmonize um, the taxation for these groups so that they cannot, they would be paying inflated numbers and they can have something more... Um, more consistent for them. Okay, moving on to the news direct. We don't have many papers today. Wonder why. Uh, I think I can go on a quick break. When we come back, we can continue with the review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, still, uh, I was going to take a story, why third force would not be difficult, but would, would be difficult according to NABA, but I'll take that story a bit later. Let me move on quickly to the news direct. 13 years after Buhari signs PIB into law, we talked about that already. Uh, malaria marking their flags of distribution of 5 million insecticide-treated nets across the 33 local governments. Um, police arrest 39 suspects, recover two RPGs, uh, 13 AK-47 rifles and 58 wraps of dynamite. Hmm. I read that story. I did. <laughs> Keita uh, commends state funds on revamping tertiary institutions. Um, effective judicial system will assist Nigeria's economy, says Ambassador Rimi. Okay, let's so start with... Um, yeah, go ahead. Has, you know, flagged off a uh, distribution of about 5 million um, mosquito-treated nets, nets to all the families and all the, the three local governments in your state. According to his special advisor on she said that, you know, they would engage workers. They've already started jingles, um, you know, trying to enlighten people on people that people will be coming to, to take advantage of this distribution. And they would engage workers who will go door to door to ensure that it gets to every family. Those were the details I was trying to look at because every time government flags off, people don't actually get the mosquito treated net. You even have to pay some health centers. But they're saying that all the 350 something health centers within your state would also be used as distribution point, but they would do door to door that the focus is also on pregnant women. I, I say it's, uh, this is laudable. We must say something is good, but how about we may ensure that environment is top priority? So if we have a clean environment, we really do not need... Works yeah. 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 Is still the you know, I was listening to that. Yeah, good. So I was reading that, too, and I was saying that, see, the way we're handling malaria issue, we cannot keep doing this giving of nets. One day we come and then we're giving nets. Mm -hmm. We need to move from here. Every other country, they move from one point to the next where we, our environment is working. But I was happy that they also mentioned that, you know, they're going to make um, primary health care accessible and affordable, free at the grassroots level. And that they make sure that the 351 
electoral wards all have their primary health care centers. So that is how what we should be looking at. Let's make um, a more uh, permanent um, investment in health care. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where we eradicate malaria totally and mm -hmm. yeah. And we can do that. Yeah. I'll yes. take the story. Um, the police arrested 39 suspects across the country, not within one location, and they recovered two RPGs, that's rocket propeller. Um, I needed to just because, like, those, these, are, those are the things they used to take down things that are flying in the air. So, mm -hmm. and then they recovered 13 AK-47, 58 wraps of dynamite. The 58 wraps of dynamite was found in Cross River State with a, a, a man um, who's from Cross River, 36-year-old, um, mother is from Cameroon, is a drug, is a... Is a, no, 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 it's not drugs. It's into ammunitions. That's what he does. He trades ammunitions across the border. Traffic ammunition. Traffic, arms yes. Ammunition he's into arms and ammunition dealer. And they found him with 38 wraps of explosive materials, dynamite, ammunition. Why is customs? And it was found. Exactly. So we need to conclude this investigation. Also found someone in Benue who had the two RG, um, RPGs. If you remember, the man that, the little, the pilot that survived that stuff was shot down because they had, these bandits had RPGs that could shoot down the military um, aircraft that was bombarding them. And this, um, young, this 78 year old man was found with two RPGs. They said he's a middleman between the people that are buying um, and those that are being supplied. And so we're hoping the investigation will find who the buyers are, who the sellers are. Also, they broke a syndicate of um, cybercrime people, and there were a lot of them, and they recovered 157 SIM cards. In this day and age of NIN, mm. but they recovered 157 active um, SIMs that were being used by the gang to commit, um, perpetrate their, their crimes. When police is doing well, we applaud them. Good job mm -hmm. in finding these people, but these people are not just the end. They are like the beginning of the investigation, yeah, and true. if we conclude, we can reduce it from the source. Yes, well sir. done. Thank you. Let's move on now to this day. Uh, what's a shared moment as Buhari signs Petroleum Act to overhaul all the oil industry? Violent defense of Afghanistan policy amid mounting criticism of withdrawal. Here we host communities to get $500 million annually from the PIA. Um, expect more intervention projects in 2022, FG assures Niger Deltas. And Jaga, rotational presidency won't solve Niger's problems. Okay, which stories are we taking? There was a story we missed on our economy because we're already working towards 2022 budgets and the federal government plans to borrow 4.9 trillion naira to finance our budget. Let this would be. be <laughs> this is um, this is a huge debt profile. We're also a total debt profile that we're using to fund our budget is going to be 5.6 trillion mm -hmm. from both local and inter and um, the international um, um, local and foreign loans. And he's saying that we don't, we, just, we just don't have any other option. So I, I know that it seems like they, they found a way to f get this money, whether we agree or not. But what we can uh, ensure Nigerians can do is to clamor for the government to block all leakages and ensure that whatever fund is going, if they are promising another Delta intervention, can we see the finish so that we don't borrow money to do roads and then at the end of the day we have a debt, we don't have roads. We don't borrow money to fix hospitals and we don't have the hospitals, but we have the debt. Yeah. So let's, let the money we are borrowing mm -hmm. go to what it's meant to do and not into people's private pockets. True. Okay. Uh, there was a story that Jega was saying that rotational presidency won't solve Nigeria's problem. And the point I was trying to make was that what we need, what Nigeria needs is a competent leader, regardless of what part of the country he's from. So he's saying that our focus shouldn't be on the rotation, but more on somebody who is competent enough and who has the, the interest of Nigerians at heart and who can actually take us to where we need to lead that leadership. That's another hot anyway. topic. So that's actually an interesting that's topic a very hot to topic. discuss. But um, that's his own perspective. Okay. That's all we can take. Oh, hi. Hey. Hey, Ibrahim Bagarbe, from my head of state, general, from my head of state of Nigeria, General Ibrahim Badamosi of Angida, mm -hmm. who placed my father on house arrest <laughs> and seized his passport. He's 80 years old today. Happy birthday, General. Many people are sending him messages. You know, we just keep thinking, the mixed feelings, mixed reactions. People mm -hmm. are just thinking, hmm, this same IBB. He's 80 and we're celebrating him. And, and many of the people that were protesting against his government have Yo, passed on. I'm telling you, you know. this is life. This is life, no balance. At but all. then I was saying that these people were leading this country at very young age. That's why mm. they seem like they have lived forever. They were mm. so young yeah. when they were... And now the, the people that are still leading, leading us are so old. Mm. And they're they're age mates now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. So he's 
I mean, now they're sick. I mean, he's getting a lot of accolades. And I'm thinking, ah, that's not the same people that were saying that Brian was the, that the general was the no, cause this... of where we are today. But now, he's get, if you see this day, this day you, I'm not saying this day. If you day, live day. long enough in this world, you will see a lot of problems. You celebrate, mm. forget all the things that have happened. Many things well, too. We also join Nigerians in celebrating him. Mm. Since they are celebrating, we celebrate you. Happy birthday. Happy, because it was But you have lived happy. long. You know, yes. years. We want, to, years. I want so, to be alive long enough to be only when I'm good. I want to be alive okay. to see Nigeria succeed. And a I think that should be a legacy for really. so everybody for that is. IBB, we wish you many years. And we hope that the Nigeria you see today is the Nigeria you dreamed of. Because... Uh -huh. That is, um, I mean, that's, that means that's what, what we want to What a birthday. What a birthday wish. I think we should just move on. <laughs> okay, let's go to a break. <laughs> when we return, we move on to our hot topic of the day. No, we have our friends from the um, Roland, oh. I believe. Mm -hmm. We're going to break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us. So this is our sponsored segment with Roller Properties. They are campaigning for their estate that is strategically positioned for both residential and commercial use. Welcome to the show, madam. Joining us on the show now is to shed more light on the Freedom City Splendor is the Relationship Manager, Roller Properties and Allied Services, Adewu Abiola. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. So tell us about this new deal, this new gig that uh, Roller has. Okay. Um... Rollout Properties, um, our mission actually is to be a leading world-class team and a point of reference for quality, um, excellence, and affordable real estate in Nigeria as a whole. And I'm sure the viewers at home will be wondering what she's saying or what does this even mean. It simply means that we, our goal is to actually um, reduce housing deficits in Nigeria one man at a time. And, of course, if we have to do this, we believe as a company that um, um, acquiring properties shouldn't be just for the rich. I mean, it should be for every class, yes. well, no matter your earnings, no matter what um, your income is. And as we, we decided to bring this new tidings, this new big thing, um, Roland actually just launched something new, like last week. It is huge, it is big, it is luxurious. And that's, as the name implies, Freedom City Splendor. Splendor. Okay, you describe it as some um, uh, position strategically for residential and commercial use. Where exactly is this um, property? Okay, so if you are really familiar with Eleko, um, this property is just 10 minutes drive away from Eleko, and it's just right next to the free trade zone. I mean, I was having a conversation with somebody earlier, and then we're talking about how Ibejileki has become the new commercial, I mean, the new commercial mm -hmm. hub. Mm -hmm. And, of course... If you are talking about the new commercial hub, you are talking Dangote refineries, you are yeah. talking about um, the seaports, you are talking about the proposed Fort Milan Bridge, and then you are talking about the free trade zone itself. So mm. this splendor itself is just by the main road. Like, you do not have to drive into any um, turnings or anywhere. I mean, you are just coming to the... To, just by the road, you have Freedom City Splendor right next to the free trade zone. I'm sure people might be wondering, where's this free trade zone? It's just go on Google and... I mean, try to find out what the free trade zone is. And then you have a land, I mean, an estate that is just right next to it. Right. Okay. So your Freedom City, if someone had bought one of your you know, estates, for instance, let's assume Freedom City, someone bought Freedom City, I would rather have Rockland because they had Rockland in Ibadan. I thought, I don't want this Lagos Wahala. I just want that peaceful, serene environment. Can they, can they just switch payments and, you know, all of that to... In your, one of your estates, or is it by, by force, by fire, you stay where you bought? <laughs> okay, so we usually say something that buy Roland, buy peace of mind. Mm -hmm. So when you buy Rockland and then you feel like, oh, okay, I do not want Rockland anymore, I want to switch, um, it's just a matter of um, coming to talk to some of us, of mm -hmm. which I can't really give you a specific answer that, oh, you can just switch like that, mm -hmm. but there'll, there'll, be there'll have to be, yes, there'll be cost implications, mm -hmm. and there has to be like a balance because, I mean, Rockland in Ibadan is not going to be the same price as, yes, I mean, yes. um, Freedom City Phase 1. Yes. 
Okay. okay, so I wanted to ask about documentation. One, one of the concerns many people have concerning the Bejuleki Axis is that many of the properties there are under acquisition, government acquisition. So what is the documentation that Rulad has on um, Freedom City Splendor? So um, for Freedom City Splendor, the, the title on the land is Approved Exition. Okay. So I wouldn't want to like, um, confuse my viewers at all. Can you explain what and, Okay, so is. if we're talking Approved Exition, it just simply means that government has released this land for development. So mm -hmm. like, I would love to go more into this, but because of um, the fact that I need to um, say some other things. I wouldn't mm -hmm. want to confuse people that do not really understand what invest right. real estate is. Yeah. But you do get papers and it is safe. Yes, so it that's is what safe. People want. Yes, yeah. it is safe. And the do not have... means the government has allowed people to use mm -hmm. the land for whatever they want to use it for and they can then process documentation on it, which okay. is a major yeah, relief okay. for those concerned. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so of course we need to talk about the money. Yes. And then if there are installment, payments in installments and yeah. things like that to help people of different classes. Oh, okay. So um, talking about the money for um, Freedom City Splendor, it is 7 million naira. And it is 7 million naira because of this title. And I can tell you for a fact that a land has its approved exception. It means a lot. And the fact that it's even by the expression right next to the free trade zone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't know um what to expect i mean like you know a lot of things to expect from investing in land mm -hmm. so like when you invest even right from when i was young i was always told that investing in land is like one of the biggest yes. things you can so do so and then it is always said then that uh, the best investment to have on earth is earth itself mm. so when you invest in um land i mean you, you, your mind is at rest you know that okay in the next two to three years or four years, my money is secured, my money is saved, and we sure, roll out sure. properties, you're buying peace, not like um, you have a money issues or then somebody's coming later to come and tell you that, oh, this land is no longer yours. We do not have any um, situations mm -hmm. like that. And then um, to buttress my point, for people who love sustainability, talk about urbanization, you love green areas, these are like the newest place you can decide that, oh, I'm having a getaway with my family and I want to, I mean, live in this area. And as far as for the fact that um, for personal use, this estate is actually suitable again for other um, purposes, sure. such as, I mean, service department, short right. letter apartment. So is there, is there a standard uh, building, building um, layout, approved layout, layout and approved? Or you can just come in and buy your land and build whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, you can actually just come in, buy your land and build whatever you want. Okay. I was talking to one of my clients like yesterday, and he was asking me questions concerning this Freedom City Spender. And I'm not even trying to be fake or anything. It got four plots just yesterday. And as of this morning, I still send a deal for this same land. And, and this is simply because for someone who understands what investment is, he, he decided that, okay, I'm not even letting this go. I want to jump on it straight away. Let's qualify, build what you want. So Rola, uh, the, the Freedom City is supposed to be residential. Yes, yes. And commercial. And commercial. And commercial. So mm. you can just come in and build your malls around. Yes. Is there, do you have a specific um, commercial um, area yeah. and is there a different price for the commercial plots? No, it's just this, it's just no, it's the same, same thing. thing. Yes, it's the same thing for both residential and... So and yeah. also, I would like to mention that at the end of this month, mm. August, we are going to change the price from 7 million naira to 10 million naira. Mm. And... I uh, would call on our viewers at home to actually jump on this particular one. And even, even if you can't, like, pay outrightly, you mm -hmm. can deposit 500000 <coughs> and then continue to pay, like, uh -huh. instrumentally for, like, 12 months. Oh. Mm. Can you pay back that to 12 months? That's, mm -hmm. that's still plenty, plenty money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it's all good, though. I mean, it's good to know that. So how do they reach you? Is there any way? Because we have to wrap up with you very shortly. Okay. How do they reach you? What is <coughs> how? What, what phone numbers or... Um, Email, website. Email. Okay, so I'll be calling out three <laughs> phone numbers as well as one website and then our IG right. handle. We have um, 070-2500-4785. That's the first number to call. Then you can call 070-2500-4784. That's the second number to call. And then the third number to call is 91 it's six. Can I take that again? Oh, yeah, sure. Please. Okay, so 70 4785 That's the first number to call. And then the second number to call is 70 The third number to call is 091-390-800-80086. So you can reach us on www.rolloutproperties.com and also on IG at Ltd.
Okay. So that's Rollout Properties LTD. One word. Okay. Nice. Fantastic. So there you have it for our sponsored segment with Rollout Properties. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Mo. Thank you. All right, so that's much. all we can take on this segment. Stay with us. We'll come back with our hot topics. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, Professor Atahiro Jaga made an interesting statement um, yesterday concerning rotational um, presidency. He was saying that we don't necessarily need rotational. What we need is a competent leader for this country. And that stirred up quite a bit of conversation. Do you agree with him? Do you think that what we need is competent, not necessarily rotational? Please call us on our numbers. 081... Uh, Still trying to know these numbers off the top of my head. Uh, 081-270-53687 and 091-390-76948. You can also send us messages on YouTube and Facebook. We'll be happy to read your comments. All right, so there are two sides of this because men, the average Nigerian believes wholeheartedly, well, many Nigerians believe, let me not speak for everybody, many Nigerians believe that rightfully, um, power should be rotated to the southeast because obviously, for obvious reasons, every other major ethnic group have seen an opportunity at that, at that, at that table. So everybody, many people accept that. But there's another argument that where we are at, as, a, as a country, we are at such crossroads where we need decisive leadership. We need somebody who can actually move this ship of, of Nigeria to a, a, um, a viable destination. So do you agree with Professor that maybe we shouldn't be thinking of ethnicity at this time. Or should we say that, no, we must first of all cover all grounds before we start thinking of competence. Let me come to you. Top, I want to start? Yes, I don't agree with him <laughs> at all. And I know that he's entitled to his opinion considering um, how involved he was, he's been in our democracy or maybe because of the privilege of position he had to be at INEC, cha INEC um, chairman, chairman for a while. But I don't agree with him. I believe strongly that, uh, uh, yes, Competence and corruption is part of our problem. But also, another key part of the problem of Nigeria is equity. The fact that some people feel like they are not, there are no entities in the country. In the fact that they feel like there are no bodies in the country, that their opinion does not count in the country. Those are your weak points. So even if you have a competent person, as long as some people feel like I, I, would, I can never aspire to become, because the geography and the way the country is divided, the votes would always favor this set of people, then we are not one. So... Jega might say competency is our problem. I think that if we have a more competent leader, might, we might not be as under as much pressure as we are now if everybody feels economically okay, they will not bother who the president is, who the governor is. But I also feel that when you have a country with this much divide, di division in terms of um, um, states, e ethno-religious background, we must acknowledge everybody. It's because of what is even good on the country right now, this statement is going to hit on the polity. We don't need it. So he's not saying we should we can't have a right. southeast. Mm -hmm. he, he was let me let me um, okay. read exactly for him. He said that what we need to do is that Nigerians must interrogate the capacity of the person to lead this country appropriately. It can be from any side of the country. Yes, yeah. I am. I'm happy that you went there because that's the first thing I wrote here. That the fact that someone is saying that rotational um, positions um, going doing like the zoning is not the best way to go. It's not specifically saying to a region that because of that, you are not, you should not be part mm. of the government. That is not what he's saying. So for me, I agree with him, and this is the reason why. <clears throat> I find that wherever a government is doing so well, people really do not question who you are, where you're from, mm. who you worship, who you sleep with. They don't care mm. as long as it is working well. But when things start to go wrong, that is when they start to you know, split hairs and it must be because he's a Christian. No, it's because his mother is a Muslim. It's because his children don't school here, you know. But when things work, people bother instead on, people are more encouraged to just, um, you know, want the things to work better. So um, this rotational thing also works negatively for those who feel that they have been sidelined because you have... Um, put all your eggs in a... Let's just even use it in the north now. You say 
um, the president must come from the north, even though right now we have someone from the southeast who could have been, who could have made a better candidate, who could have done a better job. But because um, we have said it has to come from a, a particular region, mm. everyone else, with all their um, good minds, with all their experienced minds, you know, and experienced people, they will stay, stay put so that people in another region will be looking for who will work. But when the person who is competent, someone who um, understands that the problem we have mm. in Nigeria first is corruption, when he gets there, when she gets there, what she will be pushing for is how this country works. And she will put, shine her torch around Nigeria mm. and look for competent hands mm. that can you know, help push the country forward. Many people always refer to Obasanjo's regime. To, uh, I said regime. His, uh, his eight years you know, as democratic president as involving everyone. It wasn't necessarily about the zones he went to. It just seemed that way to us. For us, for what he did was he went around this country and looked for the best hands. He looked for the best minds, and he brought them together on the table. And many people will tell you during that time, they saw many things economically do better for Nigeria, and that's what we're pushing for. I don't care where the person is from, as long as the person comes from this Nigeria, we're one Nigeria, and when we push people from any zone, we also push that unity. Mm. Where it is, does not matter where you're from, we're one okay. Nigeria. Let me take uh, Nima, your thoughts <clears throat> on this. I totally, completely agree with Jega, and I don't even want to base it on some uh, tribe not having gotten their chance. I think the longest conversation that is most distracting from proper leadership, from the correct type of leadership we need, is this uh, 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 conversation of zone, zone uh, tribes, and all of those things is the most distracting and the encourages incompetence. Look at where we are. Look at where we could have been. We see the future we want, and we have our people doing Jack Masakma, making, making the hashtags trend because of this failure. And every time among the elites, the political major decision makers, is about zone, is about turn. In uh, employment, you have people talking about turn. Somebody will write an exam, and it will take people on merit. They will ask you for your sponsor. Who is your senator? How many people is from the north? We have more geographical. So many of these things happen. Mm. Recently, FIRS is appealing the judgment of the uh, courts. If I generate um, VAT in my place, 90%, and you share it among the people whose laws and their local uh, uh, issues discourage their own VAT collection equally, is that justice? We distract ourselves from the most important things. Everything should be based on your ability to bring to the table. The old system where regions were producing and their strength was along their industrial, uh, industrialized areas, it, it should have been maintained and that would have but gotten us man, out of where we are. Got, we didn't there's, lack there's, jobs there's then. There's a that says that it's in, it's bad, it has been, it, the, from the foundation, it has really, really been... Um, it doesn't, do, that doesn't come up well in the beginning. So why is it at this point? No, so, now but the foundation was is, good. Yeah. See, the foundation was good. The, distract, the detractors, when they came, they, gave, they sold us this idea. Mm. And we've been holding on to this idea. The, the foundation was wrong. How come the Cocoa House and all of those things were trending in those days? Mm -hmm. The That's foundation was, was good. The foundation of it rotation, was the the foundation of rotation mm. has, been, is, has been on ground since the inception the of, of, our, of, of our... Democracy. No, not democracy. Right. Of, our, of our nationhood. It was one, um, one region as the president, one region as prime minister, it was shared. And another region as a, as a finance, it was shared. Then it, was was always been, it was always been like that because mm. we must, there must be equity. I agree with you sentimentally. If you look at it from the book points, the, the most competent hand should be at the elms of affairs. All right. But when you come into Nigeria and you come into a, 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 over 60 Multi years, over 60 years mm. of... Some people feeling injustice. Sadly, the bad example of what happened in, in, in Plato State will be what we'll be using here. Look at, we interviewed a man yesterday. The man said, how come we always would have, we would suffer, nobody is going to speak for us. Then another region suffered and immediately there is a response on their part. As long as people feel injustice, they will take law into their hand. I saw that weekend and I'm wondering, what could have made a human being do such a thing? They said, when, when a human being feels like he's not a human being, you don't care about me as a human being. So I will do anything to take care of myself. A lot of people in this region will complain about this statement because you are all the other people that have gotten their own turn. When is our own turn? You're not saying so equity. Me, I, I, this I, I, is I, I, not I, I, the type of equity. So Let a, us continue. There's a, there's a part of, okay, so if it is this person's turn, her own group is also there. Edo is there. Mm. 
Plato is also there. Other regions say, okay, well, after the South East has passed, oh, it is now my turn. Where do we draw the line? The real solution Ooh, okay. is restructuring. Then, I mean, if I mean, there's I mean, any proper restructuring, there will be less of okay. okay. so we, 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 we have a structure we are trying to revert to now. Yes. This structure was our original structure. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, let me clarify on this. The Prime Minister was from a region. You know, it was a balanced form of government. Yes. In every government, you had balance. Mm -hmm. Today, what do they do? They do a democracy that appointments across agencies, appointments across bodies on one side. So I agree with it's you. But if we had maintained the structure at the time, I would be confident living yeah. in the in the middle in Midwest. I don't need yeah. any other area to live in because if I farm and eat my in the Midwest, I will have dignity. Right. But when you took it out, people started to struggle. People would go to uh, 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 be. Uh, let me not use the wrong word. Yeah, yeah. Let, let yeah. me say, um, Tokwe, you know, I think you even make my point even more with this example that you gave. So people are being killed or they feel that they are being discriminated against because they do not get justice. Mm. The reason they feel that way is because they are not getting justice. Yeah. So you now get people who, detractors, who come in and say, it's not, you are not getting justice because you are from this place or because you worship this God. The truth is that the only reason why you are not getting justice is because those at the hems of affairs Bad who leadership. are supposed to make sure that you get justice are sort of dragging their feet or because of political positionings or whatever it is, they're not doing that. So when things do not work out right, then you have people distracting you with things like religion, religion. and ethnicity. And in Nigeria, it happens all the time. You see someone who is um, um, seeking for office and he has looked around and he thinks, what can I do so that I can get more votes yes, in uh, no. this side, Ghana so more support in this side? Two he looks tickets. at it. <laughs> he, they see how the politicians also work. They'll go to the north and talk about um, um, religious differences. Mm -hmm. They'll come to the southwest because they can't talk about religious differences. differences. They'll look for ethnic differences. So that is what that Divide shows you that world. that is not what it's about. It's about incompetence and corruption. If that is what we face, we will find out that we have no uh, we will have no problem exactly. with whoever it is that is pushing the cause of Nigeria mm. and meeting our needs. There's, but a, there's, a, word, there's a word that Tokwe used earlier, which I would like us to go back to: equity. Very it, important. Yes, we hear what you have said, but. Where does equity come in where everybody who have felt marginalized? So we're trying to fix a problem, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So we agree it should only be somebody competent. But in fixing the problem, the parts that feel marginalized, shouldn't they be allowed it's to like, right, after have you finish, you After you finish eating your piece of cake, you now say, everybody, oh, this remaining, we must share it equally. But you finish eating your own piece of the cake, like... You right. finish eating it. Yes. You equity, can't eat your cake and have it. Equity cannot will just be complain. about who is at the elms of affairs. It's just one man mm. that we will need as president. Yeah. Must go round. Equity <laughs> cannot be about that. Even in our 60 years, share, share it by four, four years. It's still one man that we need. Mm. Equity is about equal opportunities for people, Everybody. the larger number of people from different areas Thank that they are from. You. So, by adult people, for instance, now, we don't need to know the senator. I hate to to be told to go and find the senator from my, from my constituency. I hate to be told that because the senator is not even finding me because I, have, I deserve an opportunity. I have bidded for or I have, uh, you know, uh, got, done an exam for, seek, sought employment for, and somebody says until he supports me, then he can bring anybody. It's about equal opportunity for anybody across the okay, so let me be sure I'm hearing you. What yes. you're saying now is that, so regardless of who is at the helms of affairs, the idea is that equity is really across board. Mm -hmm. So in the legislature, you. in the judiciary, in all those... God that will bless you. In our military appointments, if, it's, if it is yes. about ranking, yes. the next in command takes up. You don't want from who you is. sub one small boy because it's from that area. Yes. Because That's it's from your place. It's wrong. So, but you, you see okay. the thing is, when you don't... Like the solution, um, Jega said that the solution is not about uh, rotation, it's about um, competence. competence. And my own is if everybody wants us to find a proper solution, it is about restructuring. Let everybody talk, let everybody let's define and re re rearrange how so we want to do going forward. So, why don't we have somebody from the southeast? Be the leader, mm -hmm. and then everything is equitable. Mm -hmm. then, let me explain for you. I will explain when that. We come, when, when we go on a break, uh, when we, we come back, I was going to take some phone shares. calls and some messages. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still discussing rotational presidency, and I think I have Hamed from Wuse. Good morning. Are you there, Hamed? Good morning, madam. Good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. Thank you. 
I uh, it's my first time being able to get. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome. And then congratulations too for being um, a soul gate mother to be. Mm. When you said it some time ago, mm. I was on your program. It was the first of April, sir. Thing <laughs> about press, <laughs> about this presidential something. Mm -hmm. You see, you people are doing a great job. Thank you, Ahmed. Yes, please, when it comes to military uh, appointments, the military are the only the military are the only establishment in the world that goes under two laws. That is civil and military. So what you don't understand, please leave it like this. Why not take the person who is next in line? A lot is about trust in the military. So now, with all the, uh, what you are talking about, in 2011, Anambra State, a state in Nigeria, belongs to PDP. And they are looking for governorship of Anambra. In PDP, they had 47 candidates. So how is it possible? Like uh, the, the sister in hijab there said, they always be one person. They always be one person to lead. So competence, religion, ethnicity, this is our being. One, is there any Nigerian as of today, any tribe who you give power and is in position that will not be seen to be uh, nepotic? So we should, first of all, they abuse our minds from these things that don't matter. Religion is partner. Ethnicity, that is where your parents brought you into. But... Well, no, they are competent time. people from every region of this country. And there every religion. No, and every religion. They are competent mm -hmm. people across board. So it is not a case of... You can, if, if, if we are straining our eyes to find competence, we would see it everywhere if we are really serious. So it's not about um, bring anybody from... I don't care if the person they don't go to school, as long as the person is from my region, the person should become the leader because we would all suffer the lack, of, the, the lack of competence in the hand of whoever becomes our leader. So competence is a no issue. There should be parameters that measure how, the standard of competence. And you see, we must, we, we must strengthen our institutions because Good. that way yeah. it is not an individual thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not yeah. about where you are from. Yes, but some people would feel like because the institutions are not strong, mm. where you are from influences what the opportunities that come to that zone. The that we so play. if in your location, because you are from there, the, even within Lagos... Well, the president was from Bielsa. We didn't really see any major development yes, in Bielsa at the time. So it's not so yeah. much yeah. about... And and the 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 road to Bekuta was still... The Abekuta Expressway right now is still not completely done yet. It was the governor... The point is, so why can't that person be president, but the real, the real equity we're talking about is in the other institutions it's that it's are work. Collecting yeah, no, I was going to yeah. say that I just remember, like, every time there's an um, election, if you have um, family members that live, like, in the rural areas, what they hear is, this is our son, oh, this one that is coming mm. out is our son, ah. so mark him. It is not, <laughs> this is the person that has promised to do this and mm. from his antecedents, he can deliver. Mm. They'll, they'll be called, I remember they'll call us from there and say, ah, they have told us so that this one is our son. That one is not our son. We should <laughs> not even, um, you know, elect him. And that is what, narrative. yes, mm. yeah. that's one. Secondly, I don't see this um, rotational thing as being sustainable. Mm. I feel that it constantly keeps dividing us because mm. we are a multi-ethnic Country. I mean, where do we work? start? We have a state with hundreds of local governments. In the local government, you have different tribes and languages. So, so every time someone is going to feel marginalized, and the person will Thank feel marginalized you. if they just do not feel that their needs are being met, they are getting justice. So what mm -hmm. is important is just to push for justice and make sure that what is healthcare, um, education, all opportunities are available Let and me take this to call. these people. Let me take this call from Ayo. Ayo, are you there from Atlanta? You're live. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'm here. Go ahead. I'm here. Good morning. 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 This is my first time calling in. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the show. show. Um, the topic in ladies are discussing, uh, one of the presenters was talking about the competency. I don't travel around the world. If you go to Dubai and you find out that you really know who the prime minister is or who their leader is, because everything works. Yeah. In 1979, I believe, or thereabout, when Dubai was all desert, I had they come to Nigeria, 
seeking for loan to develop to buy there. Thank you. And then Nigeria refused to give them money. Today is the same country we are running to for vacation because the there's functionality of works on everywhere. The next neighbor country to Dubai is called by rain. They only have oil in that country. If you get to that country from the main city of Manama to get to Saudi Arabia, there's good road, electricity, and everything functions so much that you have to buy rain here. You know, traveling is like, what am I going to do? It doesn't go out to do anything. Mm. So it boils down to the functionality mm. of where is on is a power. That's we right. don't care if you're from Nasarawa. I don't care. As long as I want to I pay for water, I can use my water. I'm telling you. Electricity. Exactly. All right, thank you very so much, Ayo. Exactly. Yes, Toko finally landed on Jega. Jega was the head of a major institution here. He wanted the strength of that institution. He pushed for the cadre that for the he did his best. He ensured that, you know, there was a tr smooth transition between new governments. So somebody like that, when he talks, is well thought through. If a region, okay, let's say the southeast now, they've been clamoring for their region. From the local talks that I experienced, I, once I was at the Ojo local government, in front of somewhere we're trying to get a license, and somebody came and said, it's not your fault. It's because your brother is there now. Look at the way they are driving Okada. And truly, the other tribe started to misbehave. So once my person is there now, what I, be, what I say is that it's our turn Done. Yeah. to the cake. Misbehave. It's, a, it's our turn to the cake. And every other important issue mm. is sidelined until we finish taking okay. our turn. Yeah. So mm. I can that, agree that, that, that played out. That's that played out. Yeah. Let me take this that, that, that behavior and that, John that, that has been holding for me, Bado. Are you there? Yes, I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, well, about this topic you are discussing is very interesting. Uh, the way how we look at it is, if you look at the Nigerian system, if we can abolish state of origin, yes. yeah. make Nigeria central mm -hmm. at the heart of everybody, mm -hmm. we will not be having this well, problem. But if you cannot yeah. abolish that, you have no option. Give accounts to tribes. You have to give account to religion. You have to give account to everything before you can produce the president. Or else we'll be having all this problem all the time. But if the National Assembly themselves can think deep and change that constitution of us, identity, move that state of origin thing, you can have it maybe as just formality. But if it's not the key thing, you don't have this, uh, you want to fill any fund, there will be local government. If you want to get any job, they'll say, what is this? So in that situation, you will have this kind of problem. So for the presidency, you will account for everything. But competency is the key. If you have a good competency... Talking about competency, I mean, listen, I mean, I know that a lot of people don't want to hear this, but the truth is that uh, the people are saying that Ashwaju uh, wants to run for presidency. I mean, if you see Lagos State and the fact that somebody came together, he... He put together a 25-year plan, mm -hmm. which he had a succession plan where they had a team that, was, that he got in people who were competent yes. to, to drive Lagos from where he started up until as we speak. Mm -hmm. So when you say competence, he has competence. Mm. To run, the, to become president, he has it because that, that, that is who. But is it equitable for him to be the person, even position, though he is competent? Mm. Should he be the one? Because we're saying, listen, we want, it to, we want everybody to feel that they're part of this so, country. Well, so that's the question. We're not talking about competence, not the issue. Okay, wait, right, this is that who's you know, talking which, which the sentence? Wait, 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 we're going to know this, beg, this minute. Mm. Which, which one is everybody? Meaning, Before 1966, every major tribe in this country had a take. Mm. It's not after the civil war we are discussing. Mm. When will my tongue come? So let me... When will the smaller tribes come? When will we no, serve no, no, no. everybody this cake? When will the knife get to everybody's table to take their portion? Mm. Can, can we it, just stop this thing? So I understand us. that. See, what, 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 your point, if I, if, if, if I wasn't um, discuss, if we're not discussing Nigeria, I would agree with you. I'll, I'll just feel of the opinion that let everything be equitable. But we are in a place where we have... Um, the actualization of... I mean, Omo Udua, I mean, what they call yeah. that? Uh, yes. Yoruba Nation. Yoruba Nation. We have the Yoruba Nation... They are fighting they for their own. They, we, are, we, are, we have IPOB also fighting for they their don't own. Even know there their is land. so much division now that it's, it is not, it's not a surface level saying competence is the solution. It is 
Let everybody, let everybody discuss what their pain point is. If we have a proper restructuring Maybe process... Where, call fab now. It has, so it, it, mm. it, 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 it has to... It's like, Mura, you said, Oti, Wola, Tibere. That, like, it's like you are trying to straighten a tree that from the roots, it's already yeah, bent yeah. one way. It is going to be a tough job. We will need to rearrange what, we would, what is important to us. What's our nation from working. Okay. Well, I'll come to you, Mura. Okay. Let me take Matthew. He's been holding for a while. Matthew, are you there? Yes. I You're alive. Go ahead, I please. Was, yeah. Uh, how are you guys doing? Very well. Okay. You see, Mura, you are interested in your topic. That uh, East Central, uh, the East Central States, Northeast, all these uh, zones, they are not going to help us. Number one, we should make the center. We should make the center non-attractive. Yeah. If you make the center non-attractive, the zones should be more attractive than the center. If you make the center less attractive, People will go to their zone. Yeah. The glamour for the center, for the president, will no longer be there. It is very simple. Please let us make the center non-attractive. And we go to mm. our zones. You are closer to your people. Let them see how you are going to embezzle their money. Yes. Yeah. Catch you the center. Please let mm. us keep doing what you are doing. Thank you. The the center, the center. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Let's go to Maria. Yeah. Okay. okay, so I, w I written in my book, I said, juicy appointment. <laughs> so one of the reasons people fight for this zoning and this rotation is because they want juicy appointments. You will hear, they say, we have not, we cannot feel, we, we don't think that you have represented us well mm. in the juicy appointments. Mm. What are these juicy appointments? Is this the NNPCs? appointment you are looking for where you will go and show them how competent you are yeah. and you will clear the place of corruption? No, yeah. it's because you want to go and carry right. your own. So we are fighting really Selfishly. for corruption. Mm. I want to show Love me, so I need, I need, I need mm. to go there too mm. and take a part of... Oh, my brother to, to have an NPC yes, position. Yes, I need to take away too. That is what so we are fighting for. And that's why I say we need not be distracted. Mm. Let's leave politicians the with their politi uh, political talk. But Nigerians themselves, we should know exactly what it is that we're fighting for. Recently. These groups that you have mentioned, they, we have meant, uh, they've come up because people... Lack of justice. Yes, because of lack of justice. People mm. are complaining about things not working right. That is what... Um, that is supposed to fix. Mm. It will not. It's not because your nation is feeling um, your We are just the best mm. in the whole of Nigeria. No, mm. it's because they feel that maybe there's something that at the center is not targeting, is not meeting our needs. And the same for IPOB. You because you still find some people from the southeast who say IPOB really does not speak for me. Mm. I still want to be a part of Nigeria. Mm. This is not. But there are things that we need to solve. And once we solve them, these groups will just dissolve. Mm. Okay. Recent, um, recently, a, a former senator was opening house for a boy. He got a job <laughs> for in NNPC. Melai. He got a job for somebody in a public parastatal. Oh, yeah, now. That's 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 but that's, that's the Nigerian factor. You should not, you should, no, uh, that's an abnormality. Yeah. Yeah. That's the law here. It's an abnormality, but that's... It is an abnormality. It's wrong. I've called you to get him a job in TVC. It yes. is, yes. Yes. It it is an abnormality. Uh, thank God when I came, I no, no, no. <laughs> it is an abnormality. It is an abnormality even in Nigeria that it happens and we turn the blind eye. It's because we have conversations like this. Even because the caller that I called now was talking about central... You know, uh, uh, we're moving power from the central. Mm. It happens within the small, small states that mm -hmm. we have. In the states, in Ogun State, for instance, they will tell you it's not in Jebuton. It's been the uh, whole man turns since. Yeah. It is the, the Niger Delta, the Black people stone. They have the tribal confusion every time. Mm -hmm. If you come to Edo, if I will say my own, if you say my own, you know, my own. We've not, we've not seen the the the, the, the center. center for a while. And when we did, they did not allow the person to focus on developing the site <laughs> because he has to do the Bini people well. Yeah. We have these conversations and they're distracting too many for long times. Shop. Okay, so I think I'm seeing both sides of the argument, which which is really really um, interesting. Let me take this call for Lawrence. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here, please. You're live. Um, Go ahead, morning, please. Lady. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really appreciate your program, and it was my wife that introduced me to it. And uh, oh, thank, thank you. Um, I'm a first-time caller. Welcome, Welcome to the show. show. <laughs> thank you, um, Madam Morario. I've already said the right thing from the beginning. If the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? <laughs> you understand? The foundation of this country, the faulty foundation is the, is the constitution. 
1999 constitution. That is from the, our lawyer can uh, can give a more shed more light on this. The lady lawyer there. In return, everything has been bastardized. Everything has been destroyed by that constitution. So if you are asking for a uh, competent person, how can the competent person operate when the 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 the, 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 uh, the, the tools to operate is already faulty? What can he do? If, if, he, if a competent person wants to make a good policy and go to the, uh, to the le legislator, the majority of the people there can shut it down. So, so the first thing we should think about if we are going to use any competence in Nigeria is the Constitution. We need to review it. Mm. So everybody I'm talking about um, the Constitution, reviewing, and also restructuring, restructuring which is... The, which, so, I mean, when I think about sometimes, I'm like, who do we trust to restructure this country? Because we thought President Mohamed Buhari would do it. For whatever reason, because he promised during campaign that we're going to have some kind of a, uh, a review. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. So whoever is coming afterwards, can we trust them to restructure this country? That's another issue to discuss. And are we going to focus on restructuring first before 2023? Should we, should we, can, we, can, can we force the presidency today to say, okay, well, let us have this referendum? Let us have this conversation today because I, it's still beyond me that the natural confab that was widely celebrated mm. as almost free and yes. fair was, it was not accepted and adopted legally such that we can actually execute on it. So mm. these are issues that Nigerians are coming for because it will all help us to answer the question of 2023. Mm. Who should lead? Pastor Etua, when he came on this show, he said to us that um, it's better to get in the people that we know are competent first they are the ones that will give us the restructuring because what applies right now um, works for those in Already power mm -hmm. right now. We cannot expect them to take the bowl of meat in front of them and share it. They are not the ones to do it for us. So we need to find those who are competent. And that's why we need to have better conversations when we're picking mm -hmm. our leaders, better mm -hmm. conversations when, you know, at elections. Then when they get there, they would now implement those things that we're mm. asking for. You cannot ask someone that this plan is already working mm. for to change it. We have to this wrap up. This yes. is not so bad for me. It's not so dysfunctional that it cannot work. It is the Nigerian the people, people who has refused, who have refused constantly to uphold it. The constitution is the constitution that doesn't refused. have gender equity. It doesn't. It doesn't have gender equity. Yeah, then you amend it. That's why we have a national me. assembly. How many times has the American constitution been amended? Since forever is amended part time to deal with present issues. Mm. Well, doesn't nobody nobody took it out, destroyed it, and restructured just to have a new one? It is the will to do it. Mm. We have an attorney general who, who will not recognize the office of the vice president that we elected. Hmm. We ha he has the the constitution is a good document. The way I studied it, the way people are interpreting until we are ready to do use this to even exist as a country before hmm. we start talking. Sack my Jack. Okay, talk about your final words. Um, my final words is yes. I um I believe we need more competent hands, but beyond that, we need equity and justice. We need people to not feel like they are um unequal citizens when they are citizens. We all mm -hmm. should be respected as individuals, and our voices should be heard. Our clamor should be heard. If there's a court judgment favoring one person, regardless of the person's region, yes. the person should get justice. Nobody should be above the law. Okay. I think that's all we can take on this segment. Today is Tuesday. We can but have something on health. When we come back, we discuss our health topic of the day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So many of our elderly are lonely, some are dying, some are living in abject poverty, others sickness, and others have societal stigma. On the show today, we have one very, very interesting lady. <laughs> She's a geriatrician in Nigeria to speak on the imperative of taking care of the elderly in our society. Joining us right now is a senior consultant Geriatrician, GBS Medical Services, Dr. Ulu Toyi Ajala. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello. Good to have you. <laughs> Thank so you. We, we, we want to talk about aging gracefully and taking care of our elderly. Because the truth is that at some point, we're all going to grow old. Mm. And um, it's not just about us. It's about our, our parents and our loved ones. 
Um, so let me first of all ask you, what do you do as a geodesian? I, I, I've never really heard that term before. I'd like to know what exactly you do and how do you help my people to live better lives? Okay. Um, so first of all, um, a geriatrician is um, a physician that is trained in looking after elderly people. Okay. Um, I trained in the UK because here in Nigeria, when I was here as a, as a medical mm -hmm. student, I left after my house jobs, there was no geriatric medicine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the first time I actually um, heard of geriatric medicine was when I got to the UK in 1991. And um, I got there and my first job was in geriatric medicine as a junior doctor and I absolutely loved it. And um, the reason why it's so important to have geriatricians is because as people age, all of us, our bodies change. And, you know, physicians, you have, you have different specialties in um, special, different physician specialties like cardiology that focus on the heart, you know, endocrinology, they focus on things like diabetes, thyroid problems. You have chest pulmonologists. We're all physicians. Yeah. The geriatricians deal with the peculiar problems of aging and the elderly. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So um, my, my mom was in my house um, on Sunday and she was like, ah, I'm not sleeping with AC again, no. you know, the body is the way the body is. And, you know, I was just, and my mom is very agile, strong, like she's, and, you know, when, when we, I was preparing for this topic, I just realized that this, these things happen, so we tr were treating different symptoms, but in your own case, you are dealing with the general deterioration that the body goes through. How do we reduce that standard deterioration that the body would go through with age? Okay, so we're talking about healthy aging now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, healthy aging. Because there, so there are two options to life, I always say. So I tell people there are two options to life. It's either you age or you die. Mm -hmm. True. So what you True. want to do is you want to age well. Mm. We're all aging. You True. know, so I'm 51, we're all getting older. And as you get older, things start to deteriorate. So um, aging actually starts at 30. So we're aging now. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're aging. We have no, age. We have age. You have age. You look, I mean, you look fantastic. So, you know, aging starts at 30. So up till that point, it's growth. You know, the body grows, the cells grow. By the time you get to 30, things now start to deteriorate. And there are two factors that, you know, that, that um, affect this. So it's, it's either your, ge it's your genes and what you do to yourself. So your wow. genes make up like 30% of how you age. Ah. The other 70% is made up by what you do. Right. Your lifestyle, you know, your environment. Mm. You know, the other day, because my husband was here, we live in the UK, my husband was like, ah, Nigeria ages you. I mean, the poor guy, he had a few gray yes. hairs already yes. just yes. from spending like a few days here because, yeah. you know, some <laughs> things don't work, you know. So what we all need to do is that when we get to a certain age, everybody needs to um, address it. Right. Mm -hmm. I was getting to 50 and I decided I've got to lose weight. I've got to start oh, exercising. You're than I was a bit. Mm. I was. Oh, she looks mm. great. Yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, I love the compliments. <laughs> 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 but, okay, for me, anytime I hear about like geriatric um, medicine mm. and things like that, I think mm. about like, like really elderly people who mm. need home care, who need people to stay with them. And I always feel that it's an Oimbo thing because people don't take care of your elderly. We, they are still part of the house. When they get old, they just have to stay at home and be grandma and grandpa and take care of them. Are we mm. doing it right? Or is a nursing home the better way to do it when okay. it comes to caring for So elderly? I have to tell you, so first of all, it's JBS Medicare Services. Okay. So I am the CEO, I'm the lead consultant geriatrician of JBS Medicare Services. And we came into operation in 2018. But I had had a dream of setting up an elderly healthcare service in Nigeria since 2007. So whilst I was doing my training, just because of what you've said, you know, people knew I was training in geriatric medicine. People were struggling with their parents. Lots of people. I was getting calls. I was getting calls from people that were struggling, people close to me. 
you know, people who were not so close getting calls because there lots of things were happening, falls, not getting the right care, dementia, you know. I did not realize until 2018, three years ago, how big a problem dementia is in Nigeria. I had no clue. I thought dementia was a Western problem until I came to Nigeria, and I, it is a big problem in Nigeria. For those of us that have our families staying with us, is, not, is it a better option, like going back to what she said, mm -hmm. or putting our family, our loved ones in homes mm -hmm. is a better option? Which one do you think is better? Which one helps them better? Is your service even homes? It's not homes. No, it's not. My service is not homes. I don't have, I don't actually have any homes. Yeah. I just have a, a healthcare service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I look after elderly, you know, the, when I say elderly, I have patients who are 65. So geriatric medicine starts from 65. So I have patients who are 65 and they've been around. They've mm -hmm. seen cardiologists, they've seen chest doctors, and their children have money. It's not like they don't have money, but they're just not getting better. They're not well. And then they call me in and then, you know, because I'm, like I'm an experienced geriatrician, I, we, see, we see what, I know what to do. And then we do it. Talking about the care at home, one of my pet peeves in life when I got to the UK was homes, nursing homes. Mm. I hated the idea. Okay. Nursing homes, I hated it. I was like, no, where I come from, we look after our parents. I mean, my grandfather lived with me until he died, mm -hmm. lived with us. You know, that was what I believed until I came to Nigeria in 2018 and saw how people were struggling. And don't forget that things have changed because, okay, you are here, but I have a very big, um, percentage of my clients who the children live abroad oh. the children are in Australia that's how far flung right. my you know Australia the States the UK France and they are worried about their parents in Nigeria and you know I alone? come in, they're living alone we can put in carers and everything but you know there's all sorts of things going on there's all sorts of so abuse. You've to where I would like to go. So you have your parents sometimes mm. with you, but you're not available yes. because of the kind of jobs and lifestyle we have. Yes. I'd love to take care of my mother personally. Yes. I'd love to Me live too. with her, manage yeah. her menu and all of that. Mm. But it's not possible. She won't even leave her house. Now, we, we, most of us resort to that small laburo, get a cousin, someone who will now put that body on and think money would solve our own commitment, mm. so we just mm. send money all the time. What can we do to ensure that that person that is in charge is fit to do the job? Because we are doing it from a place of love. But that person might not be able to do it from a place of love. But mm. if they understand what to do, you know, maybe it will be better. If I bring my mom, for instance, to you, along with a caregiver that I have attached to her to you, mm. what can you teach her and the caregiver so that they can, they can live well? Okay, okay. So it's a... Uh, okay, I can talk about my... My, my practice, my service. So part of it, not, not all of it, because we've got the medical care, we've got the nursing care, we've got the home care. I, I don't personally supervise the home care section. You know, that's run by um, my, my nursing team. Okay. They provide training for caregivers, and they also provide trained caregivers, trained okay. caregivers, okay. rather, oh, yeah. trained caregivers. So what we do in my services, if you, so if you come to us and say, oh, you know what, I'm worried about my mom, we want to have a trained caregiver, we do an assessment first. We always do a medical nursing assessment. Because what I found is that, you know, people just say, oh, we want a caregiver, just send us someone. Hmm. Uh, that, that didn't work. So, Not for me, anyway. Okay, so we have to do an assessment. Okay. We do an ass in medical and nursing assessment. Mm -hmm. So we come to the house, we the assess your, you know, we have to see the... Because we, sometimes you get to the... You send someone there and things are totally different to how it's been reported. And I don't... It's my reputation at stake. Mm -hmm. okay. It took a long time so for me to come. When you do an assessment, what would you say would be red flags for you? And like, okay, this person needs mm -hmm. care and needs care immediately. Okay, so this person... So first of all, sometimes you get there and the person, can, you know, maybe can't even stand, can't move. Okay. You know, so we want to do an assessment. Oh, hello. And then bed bound. We, we always check for pressure sores. Pressure sores, you yeah. know, can't eat. Sometimes right. we got there once and the person had had a stroke. Sores. Wait, wait. I, I, everyone else, before we go, I think I've even gone too far. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are people watching TV right now. And yes. They want to know how we don't get to this point where they are needing this kind of help. Mm. So I want you to, let, let's, let, let's reverse a bit on it. How do we age 
gracefully? How do mm, we age in exactly, a healthy way yes. so that we don't have to go through this? That even if we, my children travel abroad, mm. I can be strong enough to take care of myself. I would like you to take help us on that, those few steps. Okay. So I think when you get to a certain age, I'll say 30. Although many of us, are, I don't know, you all look so good, so I don't know <laughs> how old you are. I'm well, 51. We're all at least 30. But you're all at least 30. <laughs> so when you get to a certain age, the first thing you need to do is, you, for me, the number one remedy to aging is exercise, moving. Exercise, moving. I don't know how you ladies do it because you're here in the studio so early in the morning. I've watched a few of your <laughs> shows. Um, I also get up early. You get up early in the morning, you do your exercises, you 30 minutes a day, at least, minimum. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, for instance, I, I get on the treadmill, I do what I call a hit. I've, over, over the last 30 years, I've been able to figure out what my body needs mm -hmm. to you know, maintain my weight and get my strength and all of that. So I do what's called a hit, where you know, I walk for three, four minutes, then I run for one minute. So I do that. I try to do that at least 20 minutes. I wouldn't say 30 minutes every day because that would be lying. But I try and do at least 20 minutes every day. I also have a personal trainer. Because of COVID, that stopped. We haven't actually checked. He's not back yet. Mm. But, you know, I had that. I, I know what to do. I've got my weights. I do my weight training. Exercise is key. So number one is exercise. I'd say exercise before anything else, before food, before anything else. Mm -hmm. Number one is exercise. You've got to exercise. You've got to build your, your body. You've got to make sure that your body is resilient. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to build up your muscles. You've got to, you know, your exercise tolerance. Right. It helps your lungs, your heart, everything. So that as you get older, and everybody I know that exercises from a young age, they tend to age well. They tend to age better. That's my number one All right, exercise. So many of us are parents that they didn't exercise. They're already mm. in their 60s, 70s. Mm. There was no exercise there. And they, <laughs> and they are just, listen, they're just mummies. They wake mm. up in the morning, eat their food, they and they're just, they just I'm pray. A, no, I must mm. say, though, my mom is 80. Okay. And she's just, she always exercises. I grew up with a, an exercising mom. Oh. Yes. Wow. But my many mom is, the, my mom is the only mom I knew that exercised. Uh -huh. yeah. I still remember doing, you know, push-ups, um, not push-ups, but pull -ups. doing the abs and everything. I mean, she was a babe. She's still, <laughs> she's still a babe. But what she was saying. But she, who, but she yeah. was very, she was very different. But the mothers so for those who, who, who didn't never have... had to exercise, I mean, um, uh, what, 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 what can, can they, they do? Start from? You know, so like they don't deteriorate to the point where they are carrying them and mm. they're lifting them and everything. I think starting with walking. Okay. Walking is a very, very good form of exercise. If you can get in your 10,000 steps, Let's just say you do yeah, that well, in 30 minutes. Well. Yes, yes I'll try. I'll try. I can start, yes. So, I, I mean, I have, a, I have a patient now. He'd never exercise. He's 83. He'd never exercise. He came for me to see me. And he, he'd never done anything. And um, I said to him, I said, okay, so now we need to get set 30 minutes. I said, 30 minutes, sir. So I was there when he did 30, 10 minutes. Went for his first walk, 10 minutes. Got his grandchildren. I was like, grandpa must walk maybe twice a day. He went again, 15 minutes. So, you know, you've got, they've got to start from somewhere. The first time, five minutes, he was panting. He couldn't mm. do it. So it's never too late, you're it's saying? It's never too 83. Mm -hmm. And he's going to start now. Because I need for him to be more agile than he is so that I can mm -hmm. manage him better. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, there my own. Okay. Mm. Okay, so there are lots of um, food that they usually say, take off your menu. Mm. And many people watching always try to guess which is right or which is wrong. So which would you say, take off? Take off your menu that you take like. Out. Take out, take it out of your menu. Don't eat it. Don't, Don't get eggs. There. Yeah. Sugar. Like refined sugar. Any sugar. Some of them are like, they're like um, soft drinks. So just sugar. Yeah. Sugar out. Okay. Sugar out. What about beef? Sugar is your number one anti-aging, so your number one aging mm -hmm. agent. Oh, wow. Number one. I said that, but I still have a tiny bit of sugar because it's tough. Mm. It's quite tough. Because we grew up with sugar. Yes. Yeah. We grew up with sugar. So when you say sugar, like, I'm, I know the added sugar, but all that. The added kind... sugar and any other kind of sugar, sugar as much sugar. Fruits. No, no, that's, that's natural. That's just, that's fruit. Okay. You're supposed to have your fruit and veg. Yeah, right. But, you know, adding sugar, sugary drinks, even orange juice, all those extra sugars. Fresh. Yes. 
extra sugar, so Coca Cola, Coke, mm. all mm. those things, sugar, mm. all sugar. Let me out. ask you this question. You're an elderly person. Oh, sorry. <laughs> ask her. Ask no, her. because I have been able to stop drinking all these things. Mm. But I can't get off this malt Chocs. thing. Like, I'm ah. just crazy. I mean, like, I really want deliverance. So, one of, one of the brands actually did a no sugar, added sugar. Are those things still healthy? A zero sugar drink. A zero sugar drink. So I'm the sort of person who believes if I'm going to, because of the calories, yeah. if I'm going to have it, it better be sweet. If it's not going to be sweet, why should I have it? Right. Do you understand? Because I think we need to indulge ourselves occasionally, you know? So I, I wouldn't say cut out. The only thing I'd say cut out is sugar. Mm -hmm. 100%. It's aging. It causes inflammation. Cut it out. But honey. Honey is more natural. Very in moderation. Sugar. So I believe in having everything in mm -hmm. moderation. Everything. Seriously. I wouldn't say cut out meat. I wouldn't say cut out, you know, oil. Maybe palm oil. You can indulge once in a month or something. Palm oil is healthier mm. than regular. That's food. what I was taught until we now found that it actually clogs the arteries. I know. Oh, I know. Okay, That's so the whole point. Many Nigerian <laughs> or elderly people now will be mm. watching and thinking, see, the way they will tell us is, see, I've gotten to this stage in my life. Ah, don't even come and stress fact, me. Marian, God bless yeah, you for that. Don't, don't stress me. But then we are constantly taking them to the hospital. What would you say to them today as they're watching TV that they can do from their homes yeah. to just help improve their health? Okay. So I must confess because I'm sure some of my patients and their children will be watching. I, I believe that when you get to a certain age, we should allow you a bit of an indulgence. Mm -hmm. I mean it. And I have seen, because I have seen lots of miserable elderly people. <laughs> so especially during COVID, people were miserable. They couldn't go out. Mm. They couldn't, you know, they see their friends. Over. They couldn't have family over. And then some child is telling them, no, don't eat, don't eat this, don't eat that. And then there were just lots of miserable people. And I turned one of my patients' lives around recently... I hope my daughter is watching. When I said to her, you're like, oh, she's got diabetes. She, she likes her. And the woman just stopped eating. She stopped mm. eating. So I came in and I said, you know what? What do you want to eat? For some reason, she wanted fried rice. And all that. Let's give her what she wants to eat. And then I will manage the yeah. blood sugar. I will manage it. Yeah. But give her, she became, her memory came back. She, became, she went to the hairdresser. They were showing me, she was dancing. Yeah. They, were, they showed me, they were sending me video upon video. Upon, because we can't be too restrictive. I've said to my children, my daughter is in the studio. When I get to 90, don't say I can't have my half a glass of wine. I will be very upset. Just right. let me have it at right. that point. Like, <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, my, my just let me have it at that my point. My grandmother was with us. I mean, she's 96. Momo is like... She's healthier, <laughs> jumping, and she take. I mean, she's Oops. been taking these things all her life. I mean, this is a woman I can take in your 11 p.m. and she's fine. Mm. All her life, she. So the exercise part, I hear you because mm. she used to walk long distances oh, yes. for many years. Yeah. Her body's used to it. But yeah. my worry, uh, doctor, is that many of our mothers haven't done that, or our fathers haven't done that. Now they are older. Some of them are obese. In mm. fairness, mm. they are used to their lifestyles. And they say, listen, I am 70. I've made it to 70. Leave mm -hmm. me, let me, don't, don't come and start stressing me at this age. So those kinds of people, how do we best manage them? Because mm. they're having heart disease, that's one question. Secondly, the issues of high blood, high, high blood pressure, those adult diseases, how do we detect it on time? Because some of them, just, you wake up and your father has walked away. Mm. Some of them, they have uh, yeah, Alzheimer's, some yes, have dementia. Parkinson's. You don't, do, mm. you don't even dementia, you don't even detect it on time. Like, just on the side, yeah, that is this. But the man will just walk away. Yeah. So I would like you to really help us to hit the nail on the head. What should we look out for when our parents start to age? How do we suspect it's time for us to find a doctor mm. to come and solve this problem? Mm. Okay. So I would say that when your parents hit 65, let's say 70. Okay. So by, when your parents hit 70, please call me. <laughs> Let them have a comprehensive geriatric assessment, mm. even if they're fit and well, because we uncover lots of things. Okay, so I, I mean, why are they having me? Please go ahead. <laughs> we uncover lots of things, and what we want to do is we want to prevent that. We want to prevent that sudden because people always say it's it happened suddenly yeah. mm -hmm. last year. He just stopped remembering my name. Yeah. He just walked out of the house and drove somewhere and left the car. But it's not as sudden as, as, as all of that. Mm. It, that always seems to happen at 74, 75. But if you call me at 70, we'll do a comprehensive geriatric assessment. I'll check his blood pressure. We'll make sure his, what we call the vascular risk factors are 
fine. You know, his blood pressure is fine, his cholesterol is fine, he doesn't have diabetes, his thyroid's working fine, all his vitamin you levels find, you are find okay. Who are fine without all these conditions you just mentioned? Uh, by the time we do the comprehensive geriatric assessment, Quite often we find things that are not fine. Mm -hmm. mm. But what you want to do is you want to find it whilst it Early. is it is easy to reverse things. You don't want to find it when the brain is gone. Mm. Because what happens is all these things, all these problems that are there at 70. So by between 65, 70, all these things are there. The okay. blood pressure is there. A bit too much stress, not eating the right things, like you said, not getting the exercise, thyroid's not working quite right, the cholesterol's high, you know, blood pressure at night is 100 and, well, there was one the other, 190 over 100. Mm. You know, things like that. So we'll, we'll find it, we'll pick it up. Okay, all right, let me take a talk with you. Okay, so I wanted to ask you, because you see, um, our, our audience cuts across those who can and those, those who have and those who have not. Yeah. And we mustn't leave anybody behind. Mm. Um, access to health care, what, 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 which of, what would be the essential test for those who can't afford a specialist but would be going to the general hospitals? What, what, what should they be asking for? If you're watching this show now and you're 65 years about going to 70, when you go for your next appointment, what would you ask the doctors to check? Okay, so let me, let me list it. Yeah. So the first, let me, let me list it. So number one, ask them to check your blood pressure. That's Want to know your blood simple. pressure? That's number one. If the blood pressure is high when they get there, it might be anxiety because they're saying, Ejo, can, I, can you check my blood pressure? Or is she a me? Before you leave the center, can you check it again? Mm. So blood pressure, number one. Number two, if you've got the means, then really we should be checking, doing the diabetes blood tests and the cholesterol blood tests. Okay. If you've got the means. And for anybody, it's not that expensive. At least once a year from 65, you should check that. Number, this is, and this one I'm going to say because I've been asked this by some GPs recently. Thyroid function. Hmm. Thyroid function. Now, that is an expensive blood test here in Nigeria. It's an expensive blood test anywhere in the world. But I believe that it is one of the most essential blood tests that everybody should check at least once in a two, two to three years from age 65 is your thyroid blood test. Mm -hmm. Because if that is um, defective and it is left unchecked, dementia is looming. So, you know, all that can't for remember, wandering around, suddenly became aggressive, became paranoid. They're calling them witches and all of that. That is, that is what the end game. Wow. Mm. And that is also, yes, if, it, if you've got, yes, if the thyroid's not working properly and it is left unchecked mm. sure for 10 happens. years, that's where you're heading. Oh, interesting. So blood pressure, very important. And the reason why blood pressure, cholesterol, and um, the blood diabetes sugar. sugar is important is because these are what we call, we call them vascular risk factors. They affect the blood yeah. vessels in the brain and the heart. Right. People always think, ah, a heart attack. But what... It's having, having stroke. yes, tiny little strokes. Nobody knows. Tiny oh, strokes, mm. little strokes, blood vessel the blockages often. in the brain. Tiny, you know. Let me take this call from Ibrahim. He's been holding. Ibrahim, are you there from Joss? Yes. You're live. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, please. I'm a first time caller. Welcome, Welcome to the show. show. Yes, good morning. I'm enjoying the talk with uh, the doctor there. Thank you. And well done. Quickly, I'd like to add. Generally, uh, the elderly in our society, I'm using my dad here as a case study, is in his early 70s, and most of the things she's talking about we are experiencing. Precisely, the shock when it comes to when they start restricting your meals, uh, stopping you from eating these and that, my mom is always on his neck, and she will not allow him to eat anything because the doctor said it will affect him. So how do we manage these kinds of things? And uh, is the dementia is experiencing it also, and uh, other factors that she is mentioning. And I really want her to just explain about this. Her, uh, she has a house that she gives the care. We want to understand the setting, and right. if we want to bring someone in in our society, how, what are the things we'll follow to do? All right, thank you, Ibrahim. Okay. Um, Ibrahim, so the first thing I need to tell you is that 
all our parents, um, when they get to a certain age, they're very stubborn. <laughs> they're stubborn and they're set in their ways. The yeah. last thing they want to hear from you, their son, is don't eat this, don't do that, don't mm -hmm. go here, don't go there. Even though you are doing it for them, you're, trying, you're doing the best you can for them. So what I, what I always tell my um, patient's children my, is we've got, you've got to make him believe he's making the decision himself. So when you go to him, you don't just say to him, no, the doctor said don't do this. You say, oh, try and explain it a bit and make it his decision. Guide him in that decision so that he thinks it's, he believes it's his own decision. He's making this decision himself. That's number one. And then number two with the um, dementia, um, I don't know. I, I assume he's got established dementia already, is it? Is that what you're saying? I think he's, no, he's, 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 he's not just listening. Yeah. Okay. So, so he's got a, what did he, what was the second thing yeah. he said? Because so I haven't got, I haven't got my... Know if you have like a care center or how it works. So I where, guess is, you, where is he calling from? So I'm sure we can always yeah, get we, that. We don't want to do marketing. Let's yes. go. Mm. Let's, uh, I think I have a call from Nasser. Nasser, are you there? Oh, I think I lost I need a sheet of paper. I need a sheet of paper. I think we lost that call. All right, so my dad had a partial stroke. I think it was 19, during the, when killed Kudra was killed. I can't remember the, 19... How old was he? Mm. 1995. And then until he passed on in 2005, we were managing the partial stroke. He lost his speech. Mm. And many felt that it could have been reversed, even though he was at the time, I think it was about 70 or so, you know, when it happened. Now, my question to you is that when somebody has a partial stroke, is it, is, is, can, can, that, can that condition be reversed such that they have the normal life together? Or would there have been a better way for us to manage it? Because throughout his life, he couldn't speak. Mm. And we, we were, it was difficult to communicate to him. So let me ask you, how, how quickly did you detect that he'd had a stroke? Of course, we took him to the hospital, the doctor yes. diagnosed him. But was it, I mean, did you see, because, so with, with strokes, you know what happens with strokes okay. is that there is a blockage to a blood vessel. Yes. There was anger, you know, aggression. There's a, yes, Cause. there's a blockage to a blood vessel. And um, in the UK, if you can get to that blood vessel within four hours... Mm. Oh. We can actually give treatments to unblock the blood vessel. That reverses the damage. Oh. So people just fight. actually just it's not, maintain. It's not, yes, it's not, it's not done so commonly here, but there are centers here. Mm. There's a center in Enugu, mm. um, wow. a neurosciences center, where it can be done. Mm. But it can't be done so in So how do you detect? Centers. So when, 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 when that thing happens, how do you know it's part of stroke? Okay, yeah. so these are the things. So it's called, it's face. So you look at, so first of all, you're talking to someone and all of a sudden he can't speak. There's a facial droop. He just stops speaking. And the face, it looks like there's a droop. And, you know, maybe there's saliva drooling. Yeah. And then can't lift an arm or a leg. Right. That is, those are the signs of a stroke. Okay. Can't speak, what do you face do drooping. Yeah. Immediately take them to a hospital. Okay. Take them to a hospital immediately. Okay. And, you know, like I said, it's not in every centre. In Enugu, if you're in Enugu, you are privileged because there's a neurosciences, there's a, there's a centre there. Um, but in most places, we can't really unblock the blood vessel, but at least we can try and limit the damage by controlling things. That At that point, the body starts to fight. Mm. So blood pressure goes sky high, you know, um, everything just goes out of sync. And if we can get it, we might be able to limit some damage. Mm. But by the time that has happened, the damage is done. done. And what we want to do, and this is why it's so prevention is far, especially with strokes, prevention is far, far better than cure in this environment. You've got to prevent that stroke I'll from happening. Out. Monitor your blood pressure. Number one, blood, blood pressure. pressure. Okay. Blood pressure, yeah. blood sugar, cholesterol. <laughs> that is it. Vascular risk factors. That's and what exercise. it's called. Mm. Exercise is key. And exercise helps because exercise actually helps to maintain your blood pressure. So, you know, I mean, there was a study that was done. If you start to exercise um, 30 minutes mm -hmm. every day, also your blood pressure drugs. actually drops by... It naturally. can drop, naturally drops. Exercise will naturally drop. It, it will drop your blood pressure, not dramatically. So if your blood pressure is like 200 <laughs> over 130, it will probably drop it to like 180 right, or something. Right. But it would... Uh, I'm talking about people who it's just a bit high. Yeah. Yeah. It does help. And because, you know, the more you exercise... Exercise is not really for weight loss. Exercise is just to keep you healthy. 
blood pressure, your heart, and all of that. Many of us will be calling brain, our parents after the show. Yes. <laughs> I would say that you should tell your parents to check their blood pressure. It's a bit OCD. No, but it's a bit OCD, thing, but Nigerian, to check their blood pressures every yeah. day. One thing yeah. Nigerian elderly people do is check their blood pressure. They Not will eat all of them. They will sit down, but you see that blood yeah. pressure. Yeah. Not all of them. They always have a bag of medication. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but they carry with, with them. them. Bag of <laughs> <laughs> They're not open. Yes. They're not yes. looking yes. for drugs. Yes. I mean, That's they do one of the first things I do when I go. Bring, I won't see your bag of medicines. Because that bag of medicines can even be the cause of all the problems. And that's why you need a geriatrician. Hmm. Because you're, most people will say, ah, so I went to the neurologist, I went to the cardiologist, I went to the endocrinologist, then I went to the um, mm. pulmonologist. And each oddist is giving you their own, they're giving, <laughs> you their, they're giving you their own set of drugs to manage that problem which is peculiar yeah. to, to their them, own specialty. Mm. And then what you have is a bag full of 15 different tablets, mm. all interacting with one another. So, you know, you need a geriatrician to okay. actually tailor it down now for you. Now that you've told us about this geriatrician. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to wrap up. But thank you very much. I think one thing we've learned from this show is the fact that the blood pressure is extremely important. And the blood sugar, diabetes, is there, and cholesterol. also cholesterol. Check yes. those and thyroid blood pressure. Yes. Extremely important because those are the things that lead to dementia and oh, other great diseases that old mm. people have. I think I've taken away from here. And we have to exercise run. and stop sugar. Exercise yes. and stop sugar. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, before we wrap up, I think I have one more. Um, Nima, Topa, you want to say something? No, 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 no. Nima? <laughs> yes, I appreciate it. Okay. All right, that's all we can take. Ooh. Thank you very much. Thank I you. want to say thank you to Dr. G for my cake and Nana. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to look for All right, that's all we can take. See you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>